In just six months, I went from working alone as a freelance AI developer to now managing a team of seven people without formal college education. In this video, I will tell you the full story of how I did it from reading my first book on AI to getting my first gig and finally hiring my first employee. In college I studied computer science, but I was also interested in math and statistics, yet none of these subjects resonated with me on their own to do it for life. That's when I first stumbled upon a library on GitHub called TensorFlow, and it all fell into place. Machine learning blended programming, math and statistics at the same time, and I could not even imagine that you could build a neural net in just 5 lines of code. So I immediately dropped out of college and decided to study AI on my own. Fast forward to today and this field has shifted, I would not recommend you study the math or statistics just for the sake of AI. Instead, you should focus on practical applications of existing AI models. One thing I wish I knew earlier is that I did not have to go to college in the first place. In fact, not a single person since then has ever asked me about my diploma, and I was recently offered a job for $200,000 a year, which I rejected. Next, after devouring books for around 6 months, I built a portfolio of personal projects, and I wanted to find a way to apply them in life, which is where I believe most of you guys are right now. And the best way I found to do so was through Upwork. Today, many people on YouTube sell various agency models, but what you have to understand is that without a team, you're not an agency, you're a freelancer. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a freelancer. In fact, freelancing has been the second most transformative experience of my life, because when you're freelancing, there is nobody to rely on. It allowed me to learn so much faster than any formal college education, because I was learning from hands-on experience and my own mistakes. Besides, freelancing is the most natural way to transition into an agency model because you can't effectively lead people unless you service at least a few clients yourself. And getting started on platforms like Fiverr or Upwork is much easier than setting up your own marketing campaigns and doing projects for free just to get case studies like some people suggest. So if you've been developing AI side projects for a while, these platforms are the way to get started. My first project on Upwork was a fall detector that is still running in hospitals across Israel. It detects falls of patients using surveillance cameras and sends alarms in case of any accidents. I've learned 10 times more from this experience than from a year in college. One thing I wish I'd known earlier is that posting projects on freelance platforms is much easier than applying for jobs. Finding my first client on Upwork took me a long time and tens of proposals, but when you post your own projects, you significantly increase your chances of success because you also let your clients find you. I am genuinely surprised that there are still no popular LLM projects on Fiverr or Upwork that we often see on YouTube today, such as fine-tuning an open source model or creating a knowledge-based chatbot. Honestly, you could make a fortune as a freelancer just from these platforms and a couple of good projects. However, as I discovered later, there are more things that go into creating a truly successful project offer, which I'll reveal soon. After a year of freelancing, at the age of 21, I cut the startup bug. I set out to create my own platform for paid subscriptions on Instagram called Subtribe. I saw a real need for this, but just as I launched, Instagram released their own paid subscriptions feature. Nevertheless, this experience taught me web development, an invaluable skill that later helped me to discover my own niche. What I wish I knew before is that to find your unique offer, you need to combine AI with some unique skills of your own, and also that your first SaaS will always fail. After that setback, with only a few thousand dollars left in my bank account, I returned to freelancing. Around the same time, GPT models by OpenAI actually started to produce impressive results. Results. I noticed a shift in NLP gigs on Upwork from custom models to OpenAI integrations. Integrations were much easier to implement than custom models because with custom models you can often run into issues due to the lack of your client's data and explaining to your client why their model underperforms may be challenging to say the least. On the other hand, with pre-trained models there is almost no data required and everyone was happy all the time. So I decided to pivot and focus primarily on integrations. That's when I also noticed that almost all of the AI projects required some some form of a user interface, which I now knew how to build from my SaaS experience. So instead of hiring web developers, backend developers and AI engineers, businesses could just reach out to me alone, which allowed me to stand out from the crowd and charge much higher rates. What I wish I knew earlier is the importance of finding a niche and crafting a compelling offer. Being a generalist can make you a commodity, and commoditization leads to lower prices. By focusing on a specific area, 
area and providing a complete solution, you can make a much better deal. Then OpenAI released ChatGPT and things went wild. I was receiving 3-4 project requests a day just from Fiverr and Upwork and I was working 60 hour weeks because I did not want to miss out on all these opportunities, which eventually led me to burn out and realize that I needed to start hiring. I believe this is a pivotal moment that you need to experience yourself before starting any agency. You have to reach a point where you have so many clients that you can't handle them all on your own. This is a clear sign that you found a niche in an offer that is hard to resist. You can then confidently start hiring knowing that you're employees will always have enough work. Around the same time, I also decided to start my YouTube channel, which has since become my main lead generation machine. However, keep in mind that it took me at least 10 videos to get my first client from YouTube. The main takeaway here is that you need to start hiring and transitioning into an agency model only when you start to feel pain. When you feel stuck or overwhelmed, begin hiring for the lowest value tasks such as managing client communication and over time bring in more and more skilled professionals such as front-end or back-end developers. Lastly, I'd like to share my future plans with you because the agency model does have a few significant drawbacks. First, it is extremely hard to scale. I constantly create internal tutorial videos for my employees, but the issue is that things often change. When the new technologies become available, I find myself constantly re-recording them or re-educating my team. Secondly, the agency model involves too much manual work. Although our manual data processing methods produce much better results than SaaS platforms and we can customize virtually everything, it does limit the number number of clients we can handle per week. So the main difference between a SaaS and an agency is that in a SaaS product, all your processes are automated on the backend in code, when in an agency model, you have to do them manually by yourself. And the only thing that is stopping us from turning all of our solutions into SaaS platforms is investments. Nevertheless, I'm still working on turning one of our AI solutions for the most untapped market into SaaS, which I will in fact present as an MVP on this channel soon. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.